six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Plus player. From this glass back to that bulkhead, it's about 115 feet, and then through that bulkhead on the other side, there's another 35 feet of airplane, which is the tail of mm -hmm. Everything you're looking at construction-wise, the round ribs, the vertical ribs, the bracing, the beams overhead, the skin of the aircraft, it is all wood. Wow. And we call it the spruce goose, but it's made out of birch. Birch. Yeah. <laughs> This ladder goes up to the bottom of the wing, and there's a little porthole up there that uh, um, if you're about 10 years old and weigh about 80 pounds, you can <laughs> climb through there <laughs> and worm your way through the bottom of the wing here, and you come out into the flight deck area. Uh -huh. This is where the wings come together. <laughs> the wings span. <clears throat> It's easy to remember. It's a football field plus the two end zones. Hmm. So you can set this thing in the middle of a football field and it cover the whole field. So this crease right here where the wings come together, mm -hmm. that's the 50 yard line. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first airplane built with hydraulic assist controls. You see the hydraulic lines up here? Okay. Wow. And then going up the ramp. Hmm. Paralleling the hydraulic lines, there are some cables. Cables are hooked to the steering mechanism and they're pulling on hydraulic actuators, mm. moving whatever needs to be moved on the outside. Red tanks are fire suppression system. When Hughes put this thing into storage, it was a wooden building, a wooden airplane, and he feared fire. So. Mm. He had all of this installed. All those tanks are plumbed together into this manifold and then directed out to various parts of the airplane. Wow. Of course, all that's been disconnected now. Hmm. This is an access to the fuel tanks. Mm -hmm. If he had a full complement of fuel, that would be about 14,000 gallons. There's room for 14,000 <coughs> gallon tanks hmm. below. Hughes had nine tanks on board so with about nine tanks. It was, it was a thirsty beast. With all engines running at cruising speed, it's burning roughly 900 gallons an hour. Plus, <coughs> it burns, leaks, or Actually. spits out oil. Uh, good 50 weight motor oil um, to the yeah. tune of about 16 gallons an hour. Huh. Actually, my brother's boat burns 92 gallons an hour, so <laughs> this is the first size. My 51 Chevys. <laughs> Beach yeah. balls we found out here, mm -hmm. out in the pontoons, right here and here. So the reason they put beach balls in there is takeoff and landing speeds roughly 90, 95 miles an hour. So those pontoons skip across the water at that speed. And if they happen to hit something solid, probably is going to puncture a hole in it. Beach balls were there to mm -hmm. hold some of the water back and keep it buoyant. So hmm. the wingtip mm -hmm. wouldn't sink in the water. So the wingtip sinks in the water and the airplane's a done deal. No. It's so big and heavy, you can't get it. <clears throat> Any, yeah. any questions no. back here? I noticed the seam in the back. The guy told me it actually cracked during the flight. Yes and no. Um, the tail was a weak spot. And <clears throat> so when Hughes lifted off in flight, there was a guy up in the tail, up on the ladder. And he said the tail shook violently and it scared mm. him. He came down off his ladder sat here in the fuselage. So you can go to the outside of the airplane and look up under the mm -hmm. tail and you can see some reinforcement mm -hmm. work that was done. 
that was it was not a crack it was just reinforcement, reinforcement. because of the vibration mm. back there so now they got to figure out where that vibration, vibration started came from. yeah for sure and that I, I, <clears throat> I don't think they ever pinpointed it hmm. for sure somebody thought it was these pro big propellers blowing air across the horizontal stabilizer back there Hmm. And maybe that was somebody's thought. Mm -hmm. Somebody else thought that the vibration started in the nose of the aircraft and the harmonic moved through. And by the time it got to the tail, it mm. was shaken violently. Now, when they um, were going to finish this out to carry the troops or yes. a gear and that, that would have been probably leveled out a little more. Or so <clears throat> the cargo area, whether they had seating or, or um, cargo of sorts, that would start right about where that mannequin is at. Hmm. Forward. Forward. If yeah, the rest of it. Anything too. on the other side of the mannequin <clears throat> is just airplane to hold the tail uh, for weight. Balance. Right. Hmm. Nothing of any size would be stored back there. The reason that uh, the clamshell doors aren't on it now is because before Hughes put this thing in the water for testing, he was afraid those clamshell doors would open up when he's got it in the water, flood his airplane out and sink it. So to overcome that, they pulled the doors off and built a solid nose on it. Hmm. These are two big hydraulic pumps run by electric motors. They're little DC motors, big DC motors. <laughs> got an electrical panel here that um, <clears throat> is charging the batteries that are below decks here. Hmm. It gets its feed from an auxiliary power unit, a big generator on the deck above us. And I'll show you where that's at. Mm -hmm. So when everything comes up to full charge, this guy's job is to disconnect that, that big generator on the deck above us mm. and go on battery power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what these things are? Mm -mm. They're antennas. Oh, okay. So when I first came here, I had a mentor telling me all about this airplane. And I said, I know what they are. They're antennas, but don't they belong on the outside of the airplane, under the wings or on the fuselage somewhere? And he said, you know, if your airplane's made out of wood, you can stick them anywhere. There's nothing to block that signal. <laughs> yeah. When Hughes was about 10 months from putting this thing in the water for testing, he had it, his company was building another airplane called the XF-11 and he was trying to sell it to the government as a reconnaissance plane. So FAA's on the ground and he's ready to fly the airplane to give him a demonstration hmm. um, and they gave him um, some rules or whatever they said when you take off I want you to leave your wheels down and we want you to fly around for 30 minutes uh, and then come back to the ground so then they could inspect the airplane. Mm. So he took off and the first thing he did is brought the wheels up like he was told not to. <laughs> Hour and a half later he's still cruising overhead. Huh. Something went wrong with the bearing, a propeller bearing, and it started to uh, squirt oil mm. and that propeller then went flat on him and caused a big drag on the airplane, pulled him down and it flew into a house mm. in like Burbank, California. <laughs> so <clears throat> that destroyed the house, destroyed his airplane, and he had burns and broken bones. And mm. they hauled him out of that wreckage. Off to the hospital he goes. So he's in the hospital for a month and a half, two months, comes back to this project, and he sat in the pilot seat, and he got a big anxiety attack, thought he was running out of air, and there's nobody else is running out of here, but he was. So to overcome that anxiety, actually we call it PTSD today. So um, they put this put this air handler in for him. These are two big auxiliary power units here, big generators. Mm -hmm. This one provides power down to that big electrical panel down below. This one provides starting power for the motors out on the wings. What runs each generator 
is a small aircraft engine. Hmm. It's a little Franklin engine, got opposing motors, probably, probably just like the motor on your motorcycle. <laughs> This is the wing spar. This is the strength mm -hmm. of the wing. It's all wood, running from wing tip to wing tip, 320 feet. Remember that ladder that was mm -hmm. leaning up? This is where it comes out. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is looking down the right wing. Mm -hmm. It's a long yeah. ways down there. Oh yeah. See this little bench seat right here? Uh -huh. And there's one like that behind each engine. Anytime the engines were running, people were sitting on those bench seats hold, holding a fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, These lots pipes of. right here and here, they're four, about a four inch pipe. Mm -hmm. Those are the motor mounts. Hmm. Keeps, the, keeps the motor from <coughs> torquing, twisting. Hmm. Hmm. The fuel comes up from the hull through these pipes here and fills mm -hmm. the wing tanks. These aren't a storage tank, it's a header tank. They hold about 300 gallons. So fuel goes in and then it <coughs> exits at a higher pressure directly into the carburetors of the motors. So this tank feeds two engines on this wing, two engines on that wing. Mm. The opposite tank feeds two wow. engines and two engines. So if you lose a tank, you don't lose all the engines on one wing. Right, yeah. okay. Wow. <coughs> now the engines out on the wings are, are gas hogs with all the engines running. It's burning about 900 gallons an hour. They're also oil hogs. Um, that's just the nature of the engine. Hmm. So behind each engine inside the nacelle area, it's, there, there's about a 30, 35 gallon oil tank times eight and they're all plumbed together into the main tank which is right here which is about 400 gallons mm -hmm. this is uh you know, howard hughes like to stand on top of his airplane and take a look at it yeah um, so he's the guy with a hat on um standing on this platform you see these pipes here mm -hmm. that's the exhaust off of these two mm. Propeller from tip to tip, 17 feet 2 inches. The wow. biggest propellers ever used on this type of engine. Wow. Hughes needed a, a shore boat to chase this thing. <coughs> so he bought, he bought a PT boat. <laughs> the war had ended and these were surplus. <laughs> so anyway, he bought a PT boat. And then when he was done with it, he sold it. And he sold it to McHale. Oh, and gee, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, I can't say that to everybody. Not everybody knows McHale. Yeah. Well, that's part of the, that's the wing there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's where the right wing ends. This is called VIP seating <coughs> here. If you were an invited guest, a newspaper reporter or whatever, you got a nice cushy seat. The Disney Corporation uh, cut all these panels out, took the took these escape hatches off, and put a plexiglass up here. Mm -hmm. uh, they had some sort of catwalk, up here, so. Kind of just could walk could look in. inside, mm -hmm. but this gives us a good picture of the engine and how it sticks out away from the leading edge of the wing. Mm -hmm. It sticks out about 13 feet. Can you imagine why it would stick out so far? Uh, uh, just to give it air rushing. Faster, Here's or? where the exhaust comes out. We wanted to keep that exhaust as far away from the oh. wing as possible. Hmm. It's a wooden wing. And these things get <coughs> cherry red hot and blow fire. <laughs> <laughs> Going up forward here, um, this is test equipment. 
these guys were supposed to be monitoring vibration sensors or stress sensors that were wired back to the test equipment here. Nobody had anything turned on. Hmm. These guys were supposed to be monitoring um, temperature sensors hmm. that were wired back to here. They were wired throughout the airplane. They didn't have anything turned on, so nothing got recorded there. Uh -oh. Radio operator sat here. Flight mm. engineer sat there. You want to sit yeah, up there? Yeah, you bet. Stick your head up through the escape hatch. Take a look at the top of the airplane. Okay. Okay. Are you riding by yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I find that easier. I guess I'm hard to get along with. I agree. <laughs> Yeah, that's supposed to have been quite an experience. <laughs>